Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. Now let's take a few minutes to look at some SQL script specific language features. And one of the more powerful features is the ability to interact with tables. And, and by this I mean internal tables, uh, uh, arrays of data in, in memory, not the SQL that we execute against the tables within the database itself, uh, but the manipulation of the data in uh, in process inside of SQL script. And I would imagine many of you probably come from an ABOP background. And ABOP is, uh, ABOP is well known for its powerful internal tables. The loop add internal table, modify internal table, there's, there's so much that we can do with the data once it's at the application server level. And this is an area that where SQL script has evolved quite a bit in the last couple of years and has taken on um, quite a bit of functionality that essentially allows us to use uh, the same SQL syntax for uh, data manipulation operations, DML operations, that we would have against the database tables, but to perform them on these intermediate tables um, in the data flow within the SQL script language itself. So let's uh, let's go over to the system. Let's create another stored procedure where we can try out some of the back. There we are, and let's create another stored procedure. And let's name this build products. There we go. And uh, we've got a little bit of a code snippet here to uh, to start with. SQL. So we'll begin here with just the uh, just the interface. So we want to output a uh, products table that has three columns, a product ID, a product category, and a price. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's begin with this logic here. We'll take a look at what it is in a second. So we want to declare LT products table like EX products. So we're going to declare an intermediate table for our data flow within the SQL script process. Uh, so this isn't persisted in the database. This is just temporary internal table. Um, and we're going to declare it like our output parameter. That way, if somebody changes the signature, our intermediate table used inside of processing here automatically adjusts. That's, that's very nice. That's uh, very similar to the ABOP world where we'd say, uh, you know, data, ITAB, uh, type, um, table of, you know, and give it the structure or, or the or the database table that it comes off of. Very very similar concept. Inherit the, the structure of the internal table uh, is good for maintenance. Um, then we're going to select data from our database table into our internal table. So it's going to read all the records from MD products into LT products. Now I'll say we have a per pretty small data set here. You probably wouldn't want to read every record from a database table, a large HANA database table into an intermediate table, even a SQL script. If you can avoid it, you know, you'd want to apply some filters and, and aggregation and things like that. But, you know, this is for educational purposes. We'll go ahead and do that. And then what we have here is we're basically saying insert uh, all the records from this internal table into the output. Okay. Of course, we could have just selected in the output, but we want to show you here the ability to copy in an entire intermediate table into another, either another intermediate table or an output parameter. That's what we're doing here. And then we're able to insert additional records here as well. Um, we give it the, uh, the data as a, as a record here. Oh, I don't want to move that. Um, so product A, B, and C, and then the index that we want to insert it into. So this isn't uh, exactly like an op op append where it automatically puts it at the end. Uh, if we wanted to do that instead of a, a, a fixed index, we would uh, do like the, the record count. We would use the dynamic record count of the table, and that would always pop it on onto the end. Um, but but we see here uh, how we can do uh, pretty pretty similar functions of, of being able to mask copy data into an, an inter, 
intermediate table and then add additional records in. So that's a nice, powerful technique. Let's go ahead and save this and let's, uh, let's build this so that we can test it. It's built. And I'll show you a little trick here. We can go over to the database explorer, of course, but I so I can navigate directly there. Open runtime procedure uh, will take me directly to it. It should take me directly to it. For some reason, looks like there's a little bug here. I tried to go to the wrong container for some reason. Um, so Maybe I'll have to let the developers know of that feature that they, they have a little problem there when there's more than one container. It's not going to the right container. It should go to the primary container. Uh, but, all right, so I've, I've warned you, of, uh, watch out for that feature. Um, so we'll have to go, uh, we'll find it here manually. There's our build products. And uh, let's just go ahead and uh, do a call statement for it. And let's execute that. And what do we see here? We see all our data. But it, the data that we inserted, even though we put it in, in mass in the table first, then we said, oh, you know, insert this at record number one, two, and three. We gave it a specific index, so that's why it popped in here at, at the top. Okay. So let's go back to our editor now. And let's, uh, let's change this up a little bit. After our products, let's uh, let's declare an index here. So declare will be index as an init, and we'll initialize it to zero. Oh, double zero. That's weird. There we are. And what do we want to do now? Is we want to adjust the logic down here. Uh, so. We'll still select all the data, and so we'll still mass move it. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to add a for loop here. So basically what we're going to do is uh, for this index, for one to record count of EX products, so looping over every record in EX products, we're going to take the price and we're going to update the price uh, basically add a 25% upcharge uh, to the price. So this is like, if this was ob up once again, uh, loop at table and then um, doing an update on each record in, in that table. Uh, this is the syntax for basically looping at uh, uh, either an intermediate table or an output parameter. Uh, the syntax would be the same re regardless. Uh, basically, you know, this is a kind of a, a JavaScript or Java-like syntax here, this four. We're basically setting an index, setting it to zero. So we start at, at the first record and, and telling it to go up through however many records are in the table. So record count EX products. Okay. So let's save that. And we will now build that again. And if you remember over here, like our first price was uh, just a penny less than 2000. So we'll keep an eye on that one. And uh, actually we can just execute this again. Just remember, just a penny less than 2000, our first record. And now it's gone up. Uh, so our, our logic to update each, each price in the entire table uh, has been uh, added to this procedure. All right, so we've seen how we can mass copy data, how we can insert additional records, how we can update uh, existing records. Let's, um, let's add a couple more variables here and we'll see how we can uh, delete records as well. So let's say declare LV delete index as an init array and declare LV array index zero there we are we got a couple files there and let's uh our couple of variables there let's take the next code snippet so you don't want to watch me type too much and let's add this block and then we'll talk about it so after we update all the records now what we want to do is we want to loop over the table again so we can make multiple passes over over the table 
the, uh, the output table. And what we're going to say here is uh, if the product price, the current product price, is less than 2,500, then add the current record uh, index um, to an array of all the records that we want to delete. So basically we're just keeping count of which records that we want to delete. Uh, so then this, this index here, this array of record numbers, will be filled with any value that's less than uh, 2,500, and we're going to say delete those records. Uh, so uh, we don't have to do that in a, in a loop processing. We can feed all of the record indexes in at once there. Now we could have also, uh, we could have just taken this block and put it inside this other loop uh, as well, but this keeps, once again, for educational purposes, it, it creates little blocks that you can study individually, um, keeps you from having to mix two parts of the exercise together. That's, that's why we did the structure the way we did. Don't think that that, um, that was necessary the, to loop over it twice. Um, like I said, it's a, for, for educational purposes. Uh, so let's go ahead and build that one file. And then we will go back and look at the data again. It's done building. There we are. It's done. So less than 2,500. Definitely we're going to lose this first record for product A. We're going to lose uh, HT1000. Uh, I'm sure there's others, but let's just go ahead and run this and see. Yes, we lost a lot of records. Um, the product A, the HT1000, many others. So we see that our delete logic has been processed now as well. All right, let's see uh, uh, another example here. Uh, so after the delete statement, let's come down here and let's add a little bit more logic. Let's say uh, LV, oh, actually, I can avoid typing this. This one's prepared for me as well. The less I type, the better we are all off. Uh, I don't make mistakes waste a lot of time. So here we can say I'm going to take my index and actually I want to search inside this table uh, the category column and I'm searching for the index uh, the value PC. So any record that has PC in it and, and it doesn't have to have that exact value it can be wild carded it's essentially wild carded um, then it's going to pull out uh, and add that to this index uh, uh, value. And then uh, we can add that as an output parameter here as well. Uh, so uh, let me go grab that output parameter. There we go. So you can see the power of the search capability, which is kind of, you know, I've been drawing correlations of these others to, to ABOP. And um, I mean, although... You know, to do this in one command on an entire table, we don't really have an equivalent command. You do a loop at and and, and do it one uh, one record at a time. So um, so there isn't a, the the direct comparison there like like we've had with some of the others. But let's go ahead back over here to the SQL console. Let's oh I didn't build it. Uh, let's build it. I should have known I hadn't built it. I still have the pending deploy flag there telling me, reminding me that I haven't built it. There we are. Now let's execute it again. Oh, I need to adjust my statement here as well, don't I? Uh, so, of course, um, I've got an output parameter now. Let's just, uh, I'll cheat here, and I'll have it generate the call statement for me again. There, it's added my output parameter now. I didn't want to have to type it. Yeah, I know, I'm so lazy. Um, and I execute it. I still get my table output as result 1. All of the previous logic is applied, but now we get our result 2 tab. And here's our product ID. So there's a product with the, uh, the HT. Uh, one two uh, one zero. It has a category of PC. It's pulled that record out with that single command. Very cool. Very powerful. 
uh, technique. All these put together, uh, I think it's something, I know I've drawn a lot of correlations here to, to ABOP developers should make you feel much more comfortable working in the SQL script environment. If you come from the ABOP background, once you realize that we have these corresponding capabilities compared to ABOP and ABOP internal tables.